Hello, I am Michal Koutny from uh, Core Kernel team and uh, this morning uh, I have a slot for BOF about building and booting kernel your way. Uh, what does it mean your way? Uh, that this is not necessarily the way how we build the enterprise kernel that we ship in the RPMs, but uh, the kernels that uh, people build themselves for their own testing, and development and debugging. And why I thought it would be a good idea to have a BOF for this, because uh, I realized when I was talking with some other colleagues that everyone has uh, their own workflow uh, uh, for their specific use cases. And uh, of course, I considered my uh, solution to my workflows uh, the best. But after these discussions, I learned that other people use also some useful things. So I thought having some kind of discussion about this to share uh, our uh, tools and uh, how we use them uh, could be beneficial for everyone. So that's what I, uh, why I propose this uh, BOF. Uh, and yeah, so it's about discussion. So I, I have some, uh, uh, some slides in the beginning where I will present uh, uh, the ways how I do it. And then I expect uh, that some of you others will uh, present your uh, present or just talk, tell us how you do it and uh, what are the good things that uh, you like and uh, on the other hand, what are some good chats that uh, you must fight. Um, so, and many other things. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is not, this is not about uh, cable. There is another discussion, another, this, uh, another slot for cable. So let me start. So at the beginning, uh, I have something which I called the uh, well-known default. I put it both in uh, quotes because I'm not sure. I, I think it must be well-known. I'm not sure whether it's default for everyone. I don't know what's happening. Because I have it here on the screen, it's always, all the time. No, this is fine, like I see everything. It's the beamer. Ah, so it's the beamer. Yes, so now we can see it. No, you can't. <laughs> Uh, yes, so, so uh, I th uh, will di talk, describe it uh, without the screen now. Uh, so it's uh, the default way for, uh, that we that is very similar to how the actual RPMs are built in the build service, but you can run it locally. So uh, it works. Uh, it works with our uh, kernel source repository, which is a different kind of repository, like this uh, meta repository with the patches. And uh, usually you start by generating the patch files and adding them to the series file. So let's say uh, this is somehow done. Uh, you could see it on the screen. Uh, and the second step is uh, that you have to prepare, uh, prepare the files for the RPM build for which we have the well-known tar up script. And uh, the tar up script prepares the the, the source is tarball, the patch is tarballs, and the spec file. Then you, and then there is another script, uh, which is the OSC wrapper, which can uh, which which has multiple options. Uh, so you can use OSC wrapper to upload uh, these uh, RPM sources to the build service and have it built in the build service. But you can also run it locally with uh, OSC wrapper built. Uh, and uh, yes, OSC wrapper built. So uh, <laughs> uh, OSC wrapper built, uh, which builds it locally and it sets up uh, the build environment uh, very similar to the build service in a, in a change root directory uh, or in a, via change root. Uh, and the option dash dash IBS means that uh, you are building it against the dependencies from the internal build service. So this way, uh, yeah, so. You can see, uh, or it's uh, sometimes there uh, that uh, it is. It can be a different 
different machine than when you are actually preparing the patches. So patches were on the host A, host B is uh, where you build it uh, and it produces, uh, produces the RPM, the resulting RPM. Uh, so then you have the RPM and you have to install it somewhere. So you have to transfer it uh, to the destination machine or the mach machine where you will run it. Uh, and then you install the package there. Uh, usually uh, you have to also use the, the just old package so that you override the, uh, re re the versions because uh, this version doesn't always compare as a greater to the version that is already installed there. Then quite useful utility, I didn't know I mentioned it, is a group ones, uh, where you can use it on remote machines. Uh, if When you install the kernel and you are not so sure about the quality of the kernel, so you can only select it uh, to boot once, and uh, after the reboot, the machine will boot uh, the previous good kernel. So this is good for debugging, and uh, then you reboot the machine, uh, and if uh, you log into it, you can see that it runs uh, the kernel that you have just built from the sources. So th this, is th this is how I run it. Uh, here is some, uh, uh, here is a, or no, here. Uh, then I try to prepare some like overview card uh, for each of these uh, methods. So the overview card here is that uh, I do the code editing, code editing, I do it on my machine uh, then I have to somehow uh, transfer it to the build machine. So there is another, no, 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 there is like a degree of freedom actually how to transfer it. I personally use Git. So I, uh, I use Git for the kernel source repository to push it to the, some central repository and then fetch it. Um, then there is the build. So that happens uh, either on the build machine if you yeah, on the build machine, or if you have time, uh, you can also have it built in the build service. Uh, then another effect, aspect is uh, where you get the use, uh, user space, because you cannot uh, run the kernel just on its own. Uh, you need some user space to it. Uh, so in this case, that was, some, that was a pre-installed user space, as we have seen on the host C machine. So it assumes that I already have some machine with uh, three installed with some compatible user space uh, that I can run with the kernel. Uh, yeah, I, I run it on that machine uh, and I usually I am happy when the machine is available via SSH. Uh, yes, the gotchas here are the debug info. Uh, in the command I <laughs> uh, I have here the OSC wrapper build. So by default, the pr produced RPMs, uh, uh, the set of produced RPMs doesn't uh, include the debug info packages. So if you then realize that the kernel is crashing and you need to debug it, uh, so uh, you have to run this command OSC wrapper, OSC wrapper with another option, dash debug, so that it uh, preserves the debug info files. And the uname, uh, I mentioned it with the uh, zipper that, so that the you have to uh, override the version comparison so that it is installed on the machine. Uh, so on the right side, uh, some statistics of this. Uh, so the when I was running it, uh, yes, uh, sorry, I thought it's uh, the tarap. Yeah, the tarap uh, took uh, around uh, forty seconds uh, because it has to process uh, many. Um, Patches, uh, patch files, uh, then the build itself uh, took uh, 12 minutes, but you can see that was on the build host with uh, high parallelization. And interestingly, uh, <laughs> the zipper installation itself took uh, three and a half minutes, uh, but that, because that was VM and I think it has some uh, uh, IO uh, uh, bottleneck issues at that time. Uh, I don't think it takes so long every time, but uh, it's, I was surprised, so I put it in the slides for, for, from this one measurement. So this is one method. Uh, you can see uh, sometimes I use it uh, when I need some um, build uh, as close as possible to the three RPMs, but uh, that's not always useful for me. So the next method I use, I na named it make in container. Uh, this is what I use when I, I don't work with the C kernel itself, uh, but rather with the upstream 
uh, work, where, which is different uh, because I only focus on some particular subsystem and I don't need the exact uh, kernel uh, as, uh, as shown previously. So it is, it, uh, this, this method uh, is meant to be as, uh, uh, as similar to the plain kernel build uh, from the sources uh, as possible. So uh, you, now you, I work with the no normal Linux Git uh, uh, repository where there are the actual files, the actual source files. Then I choose some revision that I want to work with, uh, edit the files, uh, and uh, the, the last line, uh, the test SH is uh, the test script that uh, I will explain later. Uh, I, here I write that I edit it because it's, uh, the script itself has some configuration, so I have to set up uh, the configuration. Uh, so, so I edit the, the test script, so it's set. Uh, and then I, uh, this is a little bit uh, inconvenient, uh, so th then I run the script itself. Uh, and here the, the not so visible line is uh, that I use uh, rootless containers for that. Uh, so I have to set it into my environment. So I run this script uh, and here is some uh, subset of the output. So I can see that it, uh, it builds some, uh, it, it builds, I will explain later. So it builds something uh, and it actually runs even kernel self-tests and I can see the result and then I get the, I can get get the terminal where I can interactively, uh, interactively play with uh, the currently built kernel. So, and to have it uh, in this uh, card. So uh, how it, this, this works, so, uh, the code editing again happens on my machine, uh, which I find convenient because there I have all the environment set up uh, with uh, editor and uh, code search and stuff. Uh, the build itself uh, also happens uh, on my machine uh, inside that container. Uh, but uh, I, uh, I would say thanks to that having being in a container, I can easily move it uh, to a different machine. So. Uh, so, uh, I can run it, for example, with uh, ICCI. Uh, I think the, uh, we will get down to it. So I can r r run it anywhere where I can run the container, when I can have the container running. Um, and the user space, where I get the user space from. So I don't use any pre-installed system. Uh, I use uh, only initRD, so uh, it's, uh, for my use cases, it's sufficient to only run initRD and not the full root file system and put all what I need uh, into the initRD and how, how do I uh, define what I want to have in the initRD. Uh, I use Rapido, it's another useful tool. By the way, the, both ICC and Rapido are tools from David Dieseldorp, so I'm making advertisement for him here, here and I like these tools. Um, so uh, I configure the stuff that I want to have in the initRD uh, in the Rapido configuration file. Uh, and uh, then I run it on the, on the same machine, uh, on, on the same machine where I was uh, building it, uh, which is also done by the Rapido. It uh, uh, starts a QML locally and uh, passes the created artifacts. So it's a BZ image and the initRD. Uh, and which is here, it's empty. I, no problems with this setup uh, that I found uh, the best for me currently. Uh, on the right hand side, uh, you have the thing that I, the, why I actually uh, took this uh, path uh, to make it like that. Uh, because at the top you see that this is the first build that includes the build of the kernel, uh, build of the uh, initRD, and um, also build of the tests. Uh, so it takes uh, 20 minutes, but this is on a different machine uh, with uh, much less, uh, much fewer CPUs, uh, and uh, then what was important for me is if I uh, change a file, uh, although it depends how, much, how, many depend how many dependencies the file has, but if I touch, touch file so that the incremental build is uh, relatively fast, so here it took two minutes, uh, but uh, uh, yeah, most of it is because uh, I have to build the initRD every time, so it could be optimized even uh, more, but uh, the, 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 this is, uh, for, for me, it's good enough uh, for some incremental builds and debugging. So, so uh, 
this is I call it making a container. So actually, what what it is? How it differs from the plain uh, make uh, not in a container? Uh, sorry, uh, do I have it here? Yes. Uh, yeah, this is what I said. Um, okay, so um, uh, I will shuffle the slides a bit. So. Uh, uh, Generally, what's uh, the container uh, for me in this uh, sense? So there is uh, the container image, container runtime. So uh, the container image is uh, not so much different on the high level from normal ELF <laughs> executable. Uh, that is uh, some blob of data that you can somehow run. And usually when it's built, uh, you don't change it. So it's uh, immutable. And also, ideally, you could have, like, you just swap the binary or you swap the container image, and uh, if it has some same interface, some CLI options, so it's uh, replaceable. And then the container runtime, so it's uh, similar to the process. So it has some state in the memory, uh, and it has, a, it has, yeah, so, Normal program has a state in memory, while the container uh, would have the state in some temporary file system that is uh, uh, mounted inside the container. And uh, if a normal program does I.O., uh, so here the container can do I.O. again via file systems, but via file systems that are bind mounted from the outside. So the change, it can read files from the outside, so that's how I pass the sources there, uh, or it can write somewhere the results. So, uh, the, what is the main part of the make uh, sorry, of the test sh script is uh, at the end you can see it is a uh, make with a specified uh, output directory uh, then there is the image parameter that is like the name of the executable or the name of the image I use uh, and the bind mounts so uh, the two important bind mounts are I bound mount the source directory there uh, and the uh, build directory, which is some scratch directory on the host where uh, the results will be placed. Uh, when I, well, yeah, so, uh, and after some tweaking uh, with this, uh, it works uh, quite well. So, uh, <coughs> yes, so I, 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 I uh, uh, explained some of those on the card uh, slide. Uh, why I like it, so um, maybe some points. Uh, yes, uh, uh, I don't use the regular config from SRI. Uh, I have, for, the, for this sec second type of uh, builds, uh, is, uh, ups I, call it, I call it upstream builds. Uh, so I use a customized config, which is based on Tumbleweed, uh, but uh, with only modules required to run in this in the RD environment, and I have added some debug options, which I find useful to uh, have, for example, the local depth enabled uh, by default in, when you are working on some stuff. Uh, I meant, yeah, the ICC, uh, yeah, and I have another instance of this uh, container setup uh, on some build host, uh, where I use uh, ICC. So uh, ICC uh, is, uh, it, it runs as a service, I mean, as a daemon, uh, on, on that host. And it uh, checks a repository, a Git repository. Uh, uh, periodically, it checks it for updates. And when there is an update, it uh, triggers a build script. Uh, so, uh, in, in this case, uh, I can push uh, to a repository somewhere that is monitored by ICC, and um, uh, and when it sees uh, the update there, it runs the build script, and the build script is basically uh, this test SH, uh, and I, I have, in the test SH, I have the configured setup, uh, for example, uh, yeah, you saw it here. Uh, no, we will wait. You saw it there that it uh, not only boots into the kernel, but it also runs some tests. So here it runs the self-test uh, uh, of C group test core. So this is specified in the test SH. You, it can run, it can run different self-tests, or it can even run LTP. Or yeah, this is all uh, what configurable uh, with Rapido options. It implements uh, these testing frameworks. Frameworks, so you only configure it properly. Uh, so on this on this uh, test host, I have some pre pre setup tests. So I push uh, 
push the branch and then I just wait uh, until it's built and ICC uh, evaluates the results and it uh, actually stores the results in Git and then pushes the results to a, configure, to a pre configured repository. And this pre configured repository, I have it on GitLab. So when ICC uh, pushes the results there, I get an email notification configured by GitLab that it's uh, finished. So uh, I can, when I don't want to do interactive debugging, but just push something and do something else for a moment, I push it uh, and uh, then I get the results. Uh, for, of this build. Um, another useful feature I want to mention for debugging is uh, uh, it's, uh, the, the, uh, this name in the capitals. It's the name of the uh, environment, not environment, sorry, configuration option of uh, Rapido images. So it can set up the image in such a way that there is a path that is, uh, that is shared from the host. Uh, so if I have uh, some measurement tools or debugging tools on my host machine uh, and I don't want to include all of them inside the initRD image. So uh, I can specify it here and it's uh, shared via the 9PFS uh, into, in, into the virtual machine and uh, I can use it, uh, uh, read write, it's uh, very useful. Uh, yeah, and here actually I have a gotcha that I didn't have previously. Uh, yeah, I realized uh, uh, I <laughs> used to have uh, this, uh, Uh, where was it? No. The, uh, this build directory. Uh, I thought that, okay, I will have the build directory on TMPFS, uh, but I realized that was not a good idea because the build files can be quite a l large in total. Uh, so and I didn't notice that such a great improvement on my local machine. So, uh, and it was just uh, edit, um, consuming too much memory for me. So I switched to normal file system on the, disk drive. Uh, yes, so here is, so, so uh, uh, this is uh, my, my favorite setup. Um, um, uh, now I want to mention another setup or uh, because uh, this, is, this is from what I heard from the colleagues. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, it's, uh, I, this is a good idea, I think, from Petr Pavlou, uh, who uh, does uh, ARM builds. Uh, so, Petr, do you want to describe it yourself? Okay, so uh, uh, I, I got some information from Peter how he uses it. Uh, so, why is it interesting? So, at the beginning, uh, it's a similar, it's, uh, no, it's actually, it's similar to the plain uh, make build. Uh, so he, he does the code editing uh, on his uh, uh, own machine, um, some uh, Git repository. Uh, and then he transfers the file to a build host uh, where he runs the plain make, uh, but he uses the cross compilation options. Uh, so th this is, uh, these are the options that currently work. <laughs> uh, and uh, he, on the x86 build host, he can build an ARM kernel, but he builds the whole RPM. Uh, but in this case, he doesn't build the three uh, RPM as we know it, uh, but the RPM that uses the spec file that is shipped with uh, kernel sources. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. So, so, so uh, it's another <laughs> another way how to build RPMs. Uh, which I didn't even know that there is a spec file inside upstream kernel sources. Um, and uh, the user space, it's uh, similar to my previous RPM method. So there is some pre-installed machine, uh, but in this case, the pre-installed machine uh, is a virtual machine on, in cloud where you, uh, where you can pick where you can pick an architecture and the distribution that is pre-installed there. So you can pick the uh, ARM64, and uh, three, whatever that's available, and it is prepared for for access via SSH. So then, and then it's similar again. He has to copy the artifacts, the RPM file, to the machine, uh, and the machine can be accessed via SSH usually if it, everything works. And uh, uh, if uh, there are some issues, there is even a serial access via browser uh, to the virtual machine. 
So uh, yeah, I personally don't have experience with that, uh, but I, I thought it's interesting first uh, because of the RPM from the upstream uh, sources, and second because of the usage of the public cloud uh, for testing uh, for for, uh, for the architecture for which we may not have uh, the hosts or the environment setup might be uh, challenging. And another tip I've got from Peter. Uh, are yeah, here it's uh, no, not complete, perhaps ask uh, Peter for uh, precise details, but uh, you can, that, that was, um, that, you know, uh, I mentioned that the zipper takes some time to install the package. Uh, it also takes some time to produce the package because the RPM itself is uh, compressed and by default it uh, is only single threaded. Uh, so uh, with some extra RPM macros defined, uh, which is this and another similar line. So it tells the RPM build process to use parallel compression. So it should speed up the generation of uh, RPM. So yeah, that, that's I think uh, also useful tip. And now I think I went through all the slides here. Are some, yeah, here are the links uh, when the slides are available. You should uh, get it. Uh, no, so now I think it's the time for the open discussion. So I ho hope that already you have learned something or you saw something that you don't agree with and uh, you would like to suggest an improvement. Um, so, and if, if, if you didn't have anything like that, so here I wrote down some topics so that you can know what to talk about. Okay, so please, uh, Ivan. or we have a microphone for the audience. Hi, just uh, perhaps on the ARM topic. We have uh, ARM machine in the Ortos, and once our Ortos is uh, up and running. Uh, sorry, uh, I forgot. Uh, I said uh, this is not cable discussion uh, because there is another slot, and I also don't want this to be Ortos discussion. Yeah, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. Just saying that uh, we have a lot of uh, Powerful, powerful, powerful machines in Ortos, which are doing. Uh, you can use it like a build host uh, easily. I uh, daily use the this kind of machine, and workflow is uh, more or less like on x86. So no, no need to use Amazon and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, fine machines with a lot of uh, memory, mm -hmm. a lot of uh, disk space, so you don't have to use uh, Amazon. That's uh, just a suggestion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure, sure. I know that we have some internal build host that we can use. Um, so, uh, yeah, we also have internal build host of different architectures, so we can use them. I have only a remark that Bina RPM doesn't work in Tumbleweed currently, and I don't think if anyone is going to fix that. You want to? <laughs> okay. okay, and another remark is that uh, why do you use local mod config and not local yes config? You would uh, not have to deal with init RD at all after all. Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe it's a typo in my slides because uh, I don't remember exactly how I tuned it, but maybe I ended uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the process of creating the config uh, was more involved than I described here because yeah, I had from some my previous experiments, I had different config where I had built in of many features or m many config options. I had them as built in because I didn't want to have some extra modules. Uh, so actually for the cleanup, I used local yes config. Uh, yeah, but then I yeah, I think yeah for my for my testing uh, yeah uh, m building the modules in uh, is simpler. Uh, than to deal with them loading. But then I had some uh, tests where I needed to actually test the loading of the modules, so I needed some modules to be loaded. Uh, but yes, uh, local yes config would work with these initRD images. Mm -hmm. And final remark is if you use Cache at all. Uh, no. No. But why? It's uh, fine. Because I don't know it. Uh, or uh, I. I, I actually, uh, yeah, I don't know it because, and I don't understand uh, why it should be faster than incremental build with make. Uh, 
it is, it is not faster than incremental build, but if you build something from scratch or if you are get bisecting, so you are building the kernel again and again, but not everything is changed, but you are moving for, back, back and mm -hmm. forth, it's by the, uh, I don't know, by, by the order of magnitude faster. So and it could work with the RPM build? Uh, you, so it, it would not, it would work only if you build it locally, like make BZ image or something. Uh, and there is some environment variable, how to configure it. Yeah, 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 it has. Mm -hmm. it's, last time I tried it, it didn't work when you used uh, dash J. Sorry. When, uh, when you used uh, double dash C cache and uh, dash J to mm -hmm. use more mm -hmm. uh, workers, then one of them was ignored for some reason, but that was like two years ago, so maybe yeah. it, I actually, I'm using it uh, with OSC, I think it works currently. Except I have to specify for some reason the environment variable which is Ccache dir or something like that. Because otherwise it doesn't work. It tries to store the Ccache locally inside inside the build and that didn't work for me. I don't know, maybe this is fixed already, so. And uh, so, uh, you s yeah, I understand the Ccache can be like more reliable than incremental build because like if I check out a different repository or like a source, if I check out the sources into a different repository, they all will have the new timestamp, but the files will be mostly same. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So that's there where it will be much cannot. faster. Mm. Yeah. And it also works for cross builds, but it doesn't <laughs> work. It doesn't work with default slay configs because there is some unknown option to see cache. You have to disable if patching. So yeah, so it works for upstream builds. But also for less if you disable or lift patching. Okay, good, good. It's, sorry. it's something like generate IPA or, or something like the option which is unrecognized. Mm -hmm. Generate IPA. Okay, I hope this will be in the recording. I will uh, review it. So uh, Ludwig. Uh, I wanted to point out a feature of RPM build because you said uh, tar up takes such a long time. Nowadays, RPM has a built-in-place mode where you can actually build the spec file directly from Git so you don't need an intermediate tarball that you know you need to create and then extract again by RPM. So you can directly use RPM build, dash, dash, build-in-place, whatever, some options. And there's some basic support in the build script already. So you could actually take your Git checkout and have a change root building that as RPM. And some, some features are still in, in the works, so you can even bind mount the source directory into the change root of the build script. So you get the result even in your, in your local where you edit the stuff. It's not exposed to our OSC yet, but all in the works. So if, if you're annoyed by this tar step taking too much time, <laughs> I'm inviting you to join forces on the build script to improve that. Yeah, and you say that you, I can even like, uh, uh, edit the files that are part of the build sources? Uh, you have your regular the, again, git I, checkout, basically, and mm -hmm. normally you would use make on your workstation, right? But you want an RPM, so you want to use the build script, and the build script can use your sources as they are in your git checkout and build them in a change root by means of the build script. Mm -hmm. And it even like has the files and all of that, and it produces the object files in your directory again. So instead of copying all that stuff, in and out all the time. It's nowadays possible to just use the source directory that you have there. Yes, that's a... Yes, that's a... I wonder if it applies to the RPM builds of kernel, because um, we, st we still have to somehow... Uh, we, we, because we have the patches separately, but... Yeah, yeah but, but I think you also have some representation where you have all the patches applied, right? And uh, yes. that state is buildable. And if that state is buildable, you can also have the build script build it and produce an RPM out of it mm -hmm. without an intermediate tarball, without creating patches. Just taking the sources as they are and build an RPM out of them. And yes. the, like the, uh, you can take a look at AA base. The AA base package is set up in a way that it can be built locally with this build in place mode, but also can be built with the tarball and stuff. Mm -hmm. So this is like, if you want to take a look at an example, that's AA base. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Yeah, I've, uh, I, because I remember uh, uh, he also once mentioned uh, that we have this step when we first uh, generate 
tarball, and in the next step we uh, decompress it again uh, to apply the patches. Uh, and he mentioned uses usage of a PIXZ, uh, like parallel XZ. And it was uh, an interesting thought, when, because if you have the so source files on disk and the build files are in memory, so the, basically you can trade the CPU time for the I.O. Uh, that, uh, or I, sorry, I don't remember, but uh, I, well, there was some discussion whether uh, it's better to use this parallel compression and decompression than like the plain cat. Uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, but, whatever works. But what I understand you. what you say is that it's like the cat that uh, you can have the source files available directly for would, the RPG. It would skip any intermediate steps, just takes the files that are on your disk already, so no mm. compression and decompression, no copying around, nothing. Just mm. taking the files as they are. It's called build in place mode, and it's an RPM, and from there in the build script, and then it's missing an OSC build, so we have all the layers. Okay, uh, built yeah. in place, okay. Yeah. Thanks. So I probably know why you wondered if that can be used for kernel sources. The thing that will be missing on initially is a spec file, which is generated, but there is a script. You would have to run the script to generate the spec file, and then you can just run an RPM build on it. Uh, yes, yes, we have the, the, yeah, the spec file that we use for the kernel source is the different spec file that is shipped with upstream. So, uh, yeah, for example, here I see, uh, I don't know, uh, not again from the discussions uh, with the colleagues, I realized that uh, not all of them know it. Uh, and I also didn't know earlier. So, as the Evangelium, uh, Git work trees, uh, it's a quite a useful feature, uh, in my opinion, that uh, you can check out multiple branches into different directories without having to clone the whole repository because the repository object database is shared and uh, you only work with the multiple checkouts. So it's, uh, git, work tree, git, git help work tree is the man page for it. Okay, uh, so another topic, uh, I, I don't know, uh, I was told uh, that uh, because my, my some, as you saw, some of my build steps include copying uh, the artifacts with SCP and uh, like a rumor, I, that SCP is insecure in some way that it can compromise the result on the host and SFTP should be used instead. But I. Okay, you, may, you know more. Well, there is something you should uh, differentiate between two things. One is the SCTP versus SFTP, SCP versus SFTP protocol used for the transfer, and one is the command that you use. If I remember correctly, newer version of, of OpenSSH actually use SFTP protocol even for SCP command. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so the I, problem is with the protocol, which is unsafe in some way, which I don't remember the details. Yeah, so but, the, uh, SCP, but the command should be okay. The command SCP on Tumblr. Uh, if you have new enough open SSH, which probably you do. Mm -hmm. Thanks. So, uh, so the command is updated. Okay, so yeah. Takashi and then. Yeah, sorry. Um, one thing I noticed that while building my own kernel, that we can strip down many kernel configs, even more than the local mode config or local ES config. Because we enabled, for example, both Intel and AMD CPUs. And if we run the only AMD CPU, they don't need Intel stuff and so on. And um, yes, yeah, so you mean like. Uh, so local mode config is not 100% optimal for yes, yeah, it, stripping down the build time. So and you should look into the. CPU ID or something. Yeah, yeah, so you can tune up many things by cutting down the config options more manually. And also, for example, 
and BPF stuff. If you don't need, then it strips down. Then um, this module linking time can be quite much reduced. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so yeah, CPU no, or CPU based uh, optimization. I didn't know that. Uh, I I think noticed the. BTF generation that yeah, when that sometimes when I notice something that I look at the config, what could it be? And yeah, or then or whatever. You, mm -hmm. If you don't need that, you can cut down. Okay. So, so have, have you ever tried Virtme? I think you didn't mention it, right? No, uh, uh, no, I haven't tried it. Uh, but uh, there is like entry point in the slides with the nine PFS uh, that the Rapido images share. Just one directory, but I know that you are a Virtme user. Yeah, so, yeah. so if it, I can explain a bit, uh, it, it's good for the, especially for the use case you're trying something with the upstream kernel, but it can also work in uh, the expanded kernel checkout. Uh, the main uh, great thing is that you don't have to have. Uh, a virtual machine ready with the installation or copy the kernel RPM or the image somewhere because it will use your root file system mounted via virt.io as a read only with some overlay for TMPFS read write. <laughs> so it appears read write, but it's not affecting your actual root system and it uh, will boot it just that and uh, just some minimal services, not the whole stuff. And yeah, that's a quick way to boot a kernel without having a VM image. And I, I think the only downside is you have to make sure the the configs of the kernel includes all the stuff that's needed for it to work, like the weird IO and I think even plan nine. FS. And, uh, so it uses the user space from your machine, yeah, yeah. and so, and also has a split in its RD and uh, root file system. Like the root file system is the weird IO, uh, and it uses. In I think RD. there's some in it RD, and then it switches to the uh -huh. weird IO shared from the actual root OS, just uh -huh. right only. And one more quick question: You said you use it on expanded tree. Uh, do you mean like recent uh, C15 SP6 or have you, for example, tried expanded tree of C12 SP5? I think I did. I it works. Not. Or you can build it this way. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. It. So, Mir Mir and, and I think Marcos is uh, one of the upstream maintainers these days. Yeah, so, uh, I'm not sure if he's. Thank you, Marcos. Room. And Michal, thank you for the talk. I learned a lot of uh, interesting things. You know, to be honest, uh, I pretty much don't use uh, most of this. You know, I exist only in two modes. You know, I just as Peter Pablo, I use I use cross compiler. You know, uh, but to be honest, only to check that it compiles. You know, I never boot that thing because you know cross compiler cannot be stage three compiler and. For some reason, I don't trust it. <laughs> but um, uh, for like uh, kernels, I use only IBS, uh, and I'm a bit uh, unhappy with uh, uh, how I can like build, for example, on S390 kernel. I use this OSC wrapper, and in this OSC wrapper, yeah, I can switch on the debug info, which I want most of the time. But for example, I don't know how to set up in some reasonable way that I want, for example, on S390 kernel. It's um, yeah, I think my the, OBS uh, uh, foo is not like good enough. Yeah, I think this was also once this uh, a problem with PTFs. And for for I think the good news for you is that the build of other architectures should not slow down your S390 build. But it slows down everyone else on the architectures. Yes. That's an argument of tar up. That's an argument of the tar up Doesn't work in the front. Uh, the, you can set the architecture to build for uh, by uh, passing an argument to the tar up script before you even upload to the uh -huh. OBS. So it's possible to uh, restrict the architectures. With okay, thank you. Option. Thank you. 
Okay, so one last. Yeah. Or, uh, just comment. a quick remark with what uh, Vlastimil said. So basically, the way Vertme works is they have their own like custom script that would use the 9p vertio driver in the kernel, and they would mount the local file system as the root. Mm -hmm. And they do a bit of shenanigans as to essentially set up your console. So once you run the Vertme command, you're dropped in a shell. And it looks as if it's your local machine because when you do ls, it will be the current directory that was at the time when you run the script, but you will be in the kernel of the virtual machine. So it's really seamless. Yes, like uh, the blue pill exploit. Yeah, could be. <laughs> Thanks. And I think we have run out of time. So uh, I hope you learned something. I've learned definitely something. I will review the video as well. So thank you. <laughs>